Yeah, as Alex says, it's a transformational year. Um, we've completed the biggest acquisition in our history um, in acquiring Bemis. In doing that, we've become a uh, primarily US listed company. With that comes um, quarterly reporting, US gap. Um, so quite a lot of change for the business. And that happened just a couple of weeks before the year end. Um, but, you know, the acquisition, I'll come on to a little bit more detail, but it's, you know, it's highly complimentary. Um, it makes a really big difference for the business. It really makes us the global leader in everywhere, um, in every region across the globe. Um, and we've got really good line of sight to uh, near term synergies um, that will be, uh, you know, really driving a lot of growth. And beyond that, we, we, we feel that, um, you know, the, the complementary nature of the combination really puts us in a strong position. Um, you know, because the acquisition um, happened just before the year end, our results um, commentary was really focused on the, the, the old AM, Amcor business, and that performed really well. That performed in line with expectations. Um, it was a complex set of results because, you know, we completed the acquisition just two weeks before the year end. In order to complete that acquisition, we had to do a couple of large divestments as well. So that, um, you know, took sales and EBIT out from the pro forma business when we look forward. Um, but... You know, as a whole, um, we delivered um, EBIT up 4%, net income up 7%, which, um, as I say, was in line with expectations. Going forward, obviously, our guidance is on the combined basis. We feel good about that. Um, we, we've, we've guided to 5 to 10% EPS growth based on the um, pro forma combined business. Uh, so as if we'd owned Bemis for the whole of FY19, we're talking about 5 to 10% growth on that, on that combined business. Um, and, you know, that growth is really going to come from, um, you know, the synergies, which I'll, we can talk about in a little bit more detail, but the, the 65 million of synergies that we expect in uh, the fiscal year 2020, um, 180 million over the next three years. Um, and the rest of the growth is going to come from, from, the, from the base business, from the organic growth that, we, that we've um, talked about for many years, uh, kind of looking at 3 to 4% EPS growth from, from the base business. So we're layering on top of that the synergies gets us into that five to ten percent range so you know there's a lot of certainty i think around around that being able to deliver that growth the synergies are you know really in our control not really affected by any kind of macro factors that are out there um certainly in the first year as well a lot of those synergies are coming from gna so it's really from headcount so you know a lot of that is already happened um so we're confident in the delivery of that um and then uh you know with looking forward to the longer term um you know Dividend was up this year. Um, as Alex mentioned, we've um, uh, announced a buyback, a share buyback. Um, you know, and that's in recognition that uh, to, to conduct the transact, the acquisition, we had to do um, about $550 million worth after tax of divestments. So we're returning $500 million of that in, a, in, 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 in the way of a share buyback. Um, $50 million is going to be invested into us, some of our sustainability initiatives. Um, and, you know, on that note, well, I'm sure we'll talk about that as well in a bit more detail. But on the sustainability agenda, we feel really well positioned. You know, we're, we're now a clear global leader with that, uh, Bemis. Bemis had a lot of technology and innovation capabilities. We do. So combining the two leaders there really puts us at the forefront of um, shaping that agenda and winning in that space. So um, just quickly, this just highlights why we did the Bemis acquisition. This is just looking at our flexibles operations, and it really gives us a balanced portfolio and makes us a clear leader in every market um, around the globe and in a way that no other acquisition um, could have achieved that for us. Bemis is very complimentary. It doesn't do anything that we don't really do, and it was the leader in the two areas where we were really subpar in scale in North America and Latin America. Um, so what that means is that uh, you know, we're about a $13 billion sales business now, um, $2 billion of EBITDA, um, and that's before the delivery of the synergies, uh, 50,000 people, 250 sites. And, you know, the sales mix is really, really well balanced now um, between developed markets and emerging markets. Um, and then just quickly touching on the uh, on the buyback again. Um, so that that's, uh, you know, we'll, we'll complete that by the end of this fiscal year. Um, it's going to be a purchase of around 3% of the shares. Um, and you know, that's in keeping with our shareholder value creation model where, you know, we say if we've, if we've got excess, to, excess cash um, after looking at M&A opportunities, you know, we return that via a share buyback. Um, and then I touched on uh, 50 million of strategic investment. So combined um, Amcor and Bemis will be spending on R&D and innovation um, more really than the majority of our peers um, uh, 
generating in revenue outside of the kind of top six or seven largest companies, you're really getting down into much smaller um, uh, co competitors. So we'll be spending over $100 million a year on R&D. And we announced these 50 million of really capital um, type projects um, just to really coordinate and leverage that spend. So we're really getting the most out of that. Um, so, you know, it's going to go into R&D infrastructure, partnerships and you know, further innovation. Um, finally, you know, hopefully this will be familiar to some people. This is our capital allocation framework and, and nothing has changed. The objective of Amcor is the same, which is, you know, through, through really being exposed to very defensive end markets, 95% of our cash flow comes from, you know, really consumer staples, defensive end products. You know, we make primary packaging that comes in contact with the content. So it's food, it's beverage, it's medicine, um, it's home and personal care cleaning products. It's... You know, and that delivers a very stable cash flow. And you know, our objectives there are, you know, to 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 grow the dividend. You know, we've had a four percent yield down. We, we we will continue to grow that. Reinvest in the business to drive that that organic growth of three for three to four percent. And then beyond that, the 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 additional cash flow um, will be targeted toward ac acquisitions. And in the absence of acquisitions, and assuming that the balance sheet is in the right place, uh, buybacks. And all told, that should be able to give us a, a, a kind of reliable 10 to 15% um, growth in shareholder value per annum. Um, 